Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 video tutorial series. Today we're talking about envelopes and we're not specifically going to be dealing with any individual page in Groove Agent because there are three different envelope pages and they all share common functionality and it's the common functionality I want to talk about today. The three pages eventually we're going to get to look at in later videos are pitch filter and amplitude or amplifier depending on how you view it. They all share, like I say, this common architecture for how to draw envelopes and manipulate them in Groove Agent. And in typical Groove Agent fashion, it's kind of colossally over-engineered. It's about as rich and complex as you can imagine. It is actually a really fantastic implementation of envelope management, but there are a few respects in which they've gone overboard. Believe it or not, you're looking at an ADSR envelope there, a tag decay sustain release. In Groove Agent, you always have exactly one attack step and exactly one sustain node and multiple decay and release phases, up to 128 nodes in total. So you can share 128 nodes across the entire envelope, but you've always got one attack point, one sustain point, and then decay and release, divvy the rest up between them. So what we have here is one attack phase going from the very first node to the second node, and it's always exactly that. Then we have a sustain point, which is the yellow box, and always there, you can't ever delete the sustain node. And then everything after the sustain node is the release phase. So at the moment, we have one release node. If I pick this thing up and move it, then you can see some new stuff appear. We've got a line and we've got a curve Every line or curve in any of these envelope pages, you can hover over it, uh, you get this cursor, click, drag, and then you can change the shape of the curve. If I double click anywhere on this page, I'm gonna create a new node. If I double click to the left of the sustain point, I'm gonna be creating a new decay phase. And if I click to the right, I'm gonna be creating a new release phase. So now we've got two release points, two release nodes, and we've just introduced our first decay phase. Previously, we didn't have one because the first line was the attack phase. And now this line here is a decay phase. I double click again, that's a new decay phase. Double click over here. The first line is always the attack phase. And now we've got a new decay and so on and so on. You can just keep on drawing to your heart's content. Now I've just realized in prep for this video, I was having a bit of a fiddle around. This envelope amount knob down here actually defaults to zero. And when you first load this thing up, it's going to be zero. And the reason it's important for me to say that and set it to zero at the moment is because at the moment, there is no envelope being applied. We've drawn all of these nodes, but with this envelope amount being set at zero, it's not going to do anything. I'm going to press a C1, which I've mapped to this kind of chordy sound. I've also, you can hear it kind of oscillating in the sample window. Um, I've set it up so that it loops backwards and forwards to, to basically give us as much room as we want to play with the sound while we're talking about these different envelopes. One of the reasons why it was important to deal with the sample page before we started looking at envelopes because the sample imposes its will on the envelope page. So there is no pitch difference whatsoever in that tone. This envelope isn't doing anything. If I begin introducing an envelope amount, it's going to gradually modulate the pitch more and more. holding my key down here and we've stuck at the sustain point. Still oscillating backwards and forwards in sampler. And when I let go, we enter the release phase. All of that functionality is happening because our current mode is sustain and that basically does exactly what's just happened. You press the key down, it begins its journey until it reaches the sustain node. As long as your key is held down, it will stick there. The sampler is still doing whatever it wants in the background. It's still playing the sound according to its rules. And then when we let the key go, the release um, envelope takes over. 
the more I increase this knob. So you can get some really pretty violent pitch changes with this thing. So I'll set it to about 15 and we'll just leave it there for this video. We don't need to worry about it anymore. Let's have a look at some of the other modes. The next mode down is loop and this can really catch you out. This has got nothing to do with the sample loop. So I'm going to play this note again. Sample has its own loop. But that's not what we're dealing with with this feature. This green line tells us that our envelope has its own loop. And if I, I what I basically did there was hover over the green line, click it uh, and drag it to the left. And it allows me to specify the decay stages that the loop will encompass. So what are we going to get now? This is going to sound pretty crazy. So this section of the envelope is being applied repeatedly to whatever's going on in the background periodically until we let the key go. And then it enters the release phase. In one shot mode, all of that nonsense disappears. And now it plays the entire wave for as long as it can. So we're still subject to external conditions here. The sample page is going to be having an effect on how long the sound is heard for. A little preview of future functionality. The amplitude envelope is going to have its effect. You can see we've actually got a release tail, which is how when I hit a very quick key, that's what's allowing the envelope to continue after the release point. So we've got all of these different influences colliding or merging together and we have to be aware of them all at the same time which is kind of you know pretty tricky when you you're trying to figure out how a sound is constructed when there are so many potential influences finally sample loop is the most brain melting option of them all the sample loop is very difficult to show you with this particular sample because the sample's too small so when i play it, it it plays the sample really really quickly in order to demonstrate this feature sample loop, I'm going to need a longer sample and we'll get there later in this video. Uh, basically sample loop is all about not allowing the decay phase of this envelope to have any impact on the sound until the sample reaches its loop point. So if we have basically a, we have a protected piece of data, everything up to this loop point is sacrosanct and the envelope can't interfere with it. Now that period of time is too short for us to see at the moment, but we'll, we'll get to it later. Polarity, unipolar, bipolar, uh, specifies whether or not you're allowed to have negative values. So if I pick this node up and drag it into negative territory, you can see it's got minus 921 cents, minus nine semitones. If I turn this button off to make it unipolar, now this value is at 299 cents unipolar you only get positive offsets i try to avoid clicking this button wherever possible because it gets me in trouble if i press that button again and we select that node the node is still at 299 so simply by toggling unipolar on and off i've now lost my negative values and everything is 1200 cents higher than it was so that's pretty shocking just beware that that button has that functionality and decide before you do anything whether you want uh, negative values or not this next feature says sync and we can sync to the host tempo it brings up these little um, sync lines and we're currently syncing to 1 16th and down the bottom of the graph we've got our grid lines so we can now move these decay points to specific beat, beat offsets so that says 3 16th there Then we have a snap feature. Now this is used in conjunction with the next uh, control along, which is a guide envelope. So if I choose filter, and I'm, even though we haven't dealt with the filter envelope yet, I'm just going to create a load of random nodes. 
and then head back over to the pitch tab and we see that line being basically superimposed. So it allows us to sync our two envelopes up together and this snap feature is allowing me to sync one node with another. You can see it's snapping to the filter nodes behind. Then we've got this fill command. This is used for automatically or quickly creating a specified number of nodes that you're then going to edit later. And the functionality is a little bit weird. You select a node and then the length of this node, whatever it is, 323 milliseconds, is going to be used as a template for a subsequent set of nodes that are going to be added to the envelope from this point onwards. So if I set the fill number to three, it's a little bit difficult because everything's so dark in Groove Agent, but if I click the fill button, it's now created three new nodes and each of them is 323 milliseconds long. I'll just zoom back out and there you can see my new nodes. If I turn, there's a, an option here called fixed. If I turn that on, see here's my currently selected node. Now when I click fill, it's going to put the three new nodes in, in between the currently selected node and the next node along. So we're going to get three nodes on this line here. And there they are. So they're basically equally divided into that range. Those are the two different ways that you can add multiple nodes to your envelope simultaneously. You see by default that they were all selected. So when I pick them up and drag them, they all get moved. But if I kind of click out to deselect all of those nodes and then pick one of them, you've got individual editing uh, facility. While this fixed light is on, let's just have a look at dragging nodes. See if I drag this node to the right, it kind of bangs up against the next node and won't go any further. Turn fixed off. And now when I extend this node, everything after that point is extended. Now I hate this. The zoom button is black and invisible, but it is actually still live. <sighs> Very disappointing. Then we've got a few buttons here for seeing the wave underneath. So that's channel sum left and right. It's just a superimposed view of the sample underneath the envelope. This is the number of nodes. And if you select a node, so I've currently selected this node here, it tells you what node number is, what the time is. You can manually edit this value. Here's our curve value. You can click and drag to change the curve there or pick the curve up and do it that way. We can set our level from inside the level box and we can change our pitch as well. Okay, we've got a few more common attributes to go at. Level velocity, this knob down here, allows us to specify how responsive the envelope is to velocities. So if I set this to 100% and press a very light key, having hardly any pitch change, if I hit the key harder, set that back to zero so it doesn't confuse us because now we're going to have a look at velocity as a function of time. So this specifies if you hit a, a very soft key, it's going to travel at a different speed. The envelope is going to travel at a different speed to if you play the key loud. So these time values here uh, only apply absolutely when uh, time velocity is set to zero percent. Now at the moment, this value is only controlling, see this segments value is currently set to attack. So it's only the first line that's gonna be affected by this value at all. So I've set it to 100% so we get the maximum effect. I'll play a very light key. Hit the key harder. Travels much faster. To demonstrate sample loop, I need to change samples because we need something that's very long. I picked this sample here. 
and you can see it's looping around. But the important point is that I can move the loop point all the way over here. And now we've got quite a long period of time before it enters the loop point. Head back over to our pitch envelope. And create a nice simple envelope. Now in sample loop mode, it's going to ignore the decay phase until the sample reaches its loop point. So what you're going to see is that it will get to the end of the attack phase perfectly normally and then jump to the sustain point, which is graphically horrible. And then when the sample reaches its loop point, then the decay phase will be allowed to trigger. And I've set a very quick attack phase so we get through that nice and briskly. See, it jump to the sustain point, and then only when the sample catches up does it actually enter the decay phase. And then there we, we hold at that level. And then let go and the release kicks in naturally. So this is a, a more e esoteric one. Uh, I must confess, I don't use it very often. It's all about preserving transients even though I'm giving the example in a loop because it's really easy to hear what's going on in the background. If you've got part of a sample that you always want to hear and you don't want whatever um, decay phase is being applied in pitch or filtering or amplitude or whatever, if you don't want that envelope to, to, to occur during this kind of sacrosanct period before we reach the loop um, point of the sample, then you can protect it with sample loop. So that's an introduction to the concept of envelopes inside Groove Agent. Everything that we've discussed today applies to all three envelope pages, uh, pitch, filter and amplitude. Each of those pages has extra functionality on top, but we'll deal with those in the next videos. Thanks very much for watching. See you then.